Okay. Oh, man. Okay. So there's an unusual amount of errors coming off of my computer. Yes, sir. And even though it's not connected to the internet, though. Uh, so when was the last time that it was connected to the internet? Uh, th uh, two weeks ago. Okay, so well, we've been getting error reports in the past four days. So is there any other computer that's connected to the internet? Oh, yeah, lots of them. Okay, sir. So, uh, to Windows, Microsoft Windows computer, it's Windows 7. Okay, Microsoft Windows computer, sir, with Windows 7 or 8 on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so it's the one that's connected to the internet. Uh, it's Windows 7 or 8, and in the past four days that we've been getting the error messages, uh, it normally should be like 40 errors in four days, but it's like 160. So that's a lot of errors. That definitely means there's a program running in the background without your permission. Now, if it's a virus, it'll slow down your computer. If it's a spyware, then someone could actually hack into your system and use it, sir. Okay. Uh, if you're at the computer right now, I can show you where you can see these error reports, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm in front of my computer right now. Okay, sir. So on your keyboard, you have a Windows key and a letter R. Yeah? Hold down the Windows key, and while it's held down, you hit the letter R for Romeo. Okay. It'll give you a run box to type in. Uh-huh. Okay, and in the run box, you type in event, E-V-E-N-T, V-W-R. So event? For echo. Wait, okay, event, V-W-R? Event, V-W-R, that's right, sir, and you click OK. Okay. Okay, now it'll show you the, uh, the Windows event log. Uh, you click, first you click on Windows log, and then you click on applications. And you'll see the error messages that we've been getting. Hold on, it's it's working. Oh, hold on. Um, it's still working. It's loading up a lot of stuff. Uh, yes, sir. That's because it's a lot of errors in the past four days. An unusual amount. Yeah. It's running slow because probably that's the virus running in the background, using up your resources, uh, using up your memory, using up the processor speed, and doing its own thing without your permission. Uh, so that's not a good situation. Yeah, no, it, it's still loading up. Um, hey, listen, while it's loading, can I ask you some questions? Sure, sir. Um, if you were to die today, are you sure you would go to heaven? Um, yes, I would like to. Okay, all right. Um, do you know Jesus as your personal savior? Uh, Jesus, yes, sir. I am a Christian. My name is Nigel Pereira. Really? Uh-huh. So, so you, so you do know the loving power of Jesus Christ? Um, well, sir, a lot of other religions uh, respect Jesus as well, well. Well, let me ask you something. Have you ever told a lie? Have I ever told a lie? Um, I would lie if I said no, sir. Well, okay. Uh, do you know what that makes you? Uh, what would that make me? A normal human being, sir? That, guess, that would I'm, make I'm, you a liar. I'm, let me ask you this. Have, uh, have you ever looked at a woman with lust in your heart? Of course I have, sir. Well, you know, in the Bible, Jesus says that if you even look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery in your heart. Uh, sir, but Jesus came for the sinners. He didn't come for the good people. Yeah, he did come for the sinners. And, and we're all sinners, sir. I'm just, I'm just pointing out that, uh, you know, I mean, have you ever hated? Have I ever what? Have you ever hated somebody? Of course, sir. Because, no you know, in the Bible, Jesus says that if you hate someone, then that's like murder. You pull, you pull the trigger in your heart. Yeah, but Jesus forgives all that, doesn't he? What's the point if he doesn't forgive us? And he came for the sinners. He came for the prostitutes and the tax collectors, not for the Pharisees. No, you're right. He, he did come for them. But unless you've accepted Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, then, you know... It, it doesn't really do any good. If you accept Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, that doesn't mean you're not going to sin again. You're still human. No, it, it doesn't mean you're not going to sin again, but that does mean that you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Uh, yes, sir. He's definitely a person. Now, now, let me ask, now let me tell you this. Uh, did you know that Jesus actually already came back? He already came back? Yeah, he already came back. 
when was that, sir? That was in 1875. Right. That's who? Malcolm uh, Reynolds. Malcolm? Yeah. Oh, you mean like Malcolm X? No, no, Reynolds, 1875, not 1960. Uh, no, sir, I haven't heard of any other Malcolm except Malcolm X. Sorry. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, Mal, uh, Malcolm Reynolds, uh, he said that uh, Jesus... Well, when Jesus comes back, isn't the world supposed to end? And, and not necessarily, and not necessarily. As, as Malcolm Reynolds uh, told us all, uh, he said that Jesus lives in the moon. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I doubt that, sir. Uh, because Jesus came 2,000 years ago where there were no cameras, no TV, no newspapers, and today... Yeah, yeah, he did, and then he famous. returned in 1875 as, as Malcolm Reynolds, and he lives in the moon. Now, this Malcolm guy I've never heard about. Yeah, he lives in the moon. See, the moon watches down upon us all, and that's Jesus. I think if Jesus came back, we don't know about it, sir. It's, we we did, you know? except there's this global conspiracy of lizard men that live in the center of the earth, and they keep the true word of Jesus from reaching the rest of us. Uh, people who live in the earth, sir? Yeah, lizard men. I have heard about that, you know? Yes. Uh, there are friends of mine that actually believe that people live under the earth, and I kind of laugh at them. Well, are you serious? Yes, the lizard people live in the earth. Hmm? Yes, they do. See, there are two holes that lead to the under earth. The earth is actually hollow. We live on the outside, and the lizard men live on the inside. Why are they called lizard men? Sir? Because they are lizard men. Well, they look like lizards. Well, well, yeah, they're they're scaly. And they don't really have lizard muscles, but they have, like, the lizard lips. And they got the big lizard eyes. You know, they got pointy teeth. Okay. Um, they don't have tails, though. Because when you're bipedal, yeah, tails don't really make any yeah. sense. Have you seen any of them? Yes, I have. Where? Well, when my group gets together and we take copious amounts of peyote, we all see them. Peyote, there you go. Okay, I haven't tried that yet. I mean, I've tried acid, but not peyote yet. Yeah. So why do you need peyote to see the lizard, and why can't you see them without the peyote? Because peyote is what dissolves the barrier created by the, the satanic Mercury moon. See, Earth actually has two moons. There's the moon that we see, and then there's the Mercury moon that's directly behind the moon. NASA doesn't want us to know about this, because NASA is a Luciferian plot. That's very interesting. Yeah. I mean, I've done some crazy kind of things, not peyote, and I've seen weird things, like dead people walking around, but I've never seen any wizard men, or lizard men. Well, what you need to do is you need to get, like, eight or ten of your friends together and just do a whole bunch of peyote in a cave in the middle of the Midwest, and then you'll see them. Their cloaks get dis disengaged, because the anti-tachyons created by the Jesus moon interfere with the tachyons created by the Mercury moon. That's interesting. I'll definitely should try that one day. Yeah, and you'll see them. And then you when they peyote see you, what? In Florida? What? Get peyote in Florida. In Florida? I'm in Florida right now, so I haven't seen a lot of peyote around. I think it's a cactus or something, isn't it? I'm not in Florida. Hmm? No, I'm in Colorado. You're in, I mean, we are in Florida. They're calling you from Florida, Miami, Florida. So um, I'm just thinking, where do we get peyote? I'll find out. I'm sure I know someone who does peyote at some point in time. Yeah. So anyway, when you see them, they'll see the uh, ever-present love of Jesus Christ as expressed by the moonlight, and then they'll dissolve away in a horrible, painful fashion. Their skin falling away from their muscles and their organs coming up out of their mouths. So, one second. So, they're like, um, they're not good people, these lizard people? Oh, no, they don't have souls and they're kind of partially cyborgs. Okay, so what are they doing here? Oh, they're here to steal the souls of men. So what do they do with these souls, sir? And they use it to power the center of the world. Okay, so there are souls that are stolen that power the center 
and what do they do with the power? Oh, it just powers Earth. Power in the Earth. Yeah, well, Earth can use its own natural uh, wind as power, but these lizard men suppress alternate energy technologies and instead continue to run the Earth on souls and coal. Okay. That's messed up. It is messed up. Uh -huh. So why would God let this happen? Why would God leave lizard men in the Earth to... Souls to power. Well, God got eaten by the lizard men. It's only Jesus now. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? God got eaten by the lizard men. It's only Jesus now. It's only Jesus that can fight the lizard men? Yeah. Well, only he has the quantum gauntlets. Okay. So where are you right now with the computer, sir? Uh, it's still working. I think it crashed. It crashed while I was speaking? Like it's completely shut up? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. The window went away. Okay, so what do you see on your screen now? Uh, it's restarting. Okay, sounds like it's a bad problem with your computer. Oh, probably. While it, re while it restarts, you can tell me more about the lizard men. Because I, I mean, someone has told me this before, that there are men living under the earth. And he was pretty serious at the time, uh, but I didn't take him very seriously. And he's actually a DJ, and I thought he could be crazy. Yeah, well, a lot of people think those guys are crazy. But that's only no, because... If you were like a normal person, someone tells you there's people living under the earth, you would think they're pretty crazy, too, if they say it with a straight face, right? Oh, I would, but unlike a regular person, I'm not infected with a Gua'uld. What's that? A Gua'uld. A Gua'uld, what's that? It's a worm that wraps around your neck. You wouldn't feel it, but most people actually have them. And they are part of the suppression of the truth about the moon, Jesus, and the Mercury moon, and the invisible lizard men that live in caves, and dissolve when the moonlight hits them. So how do you know if we have a, one of those worms on our necks, and what do we do to get them off? You'll feel strange bumps on your neck. Strange bumps on your neck? Yeah, they'll just come and go, and they'll, they'll come uh, if you lay in one position for a real long time. They'll show up in the position that you're laying. Kind of like a sore, but it's not a sore. It's caused by the worm. Okay, and how do you get rid of those? Oh, well, you have to go to the doctor for that one. Yeah, most doctors are pretty good about that. Okay, so doctors know about these worms? Yeah, yeah, they know. They all know about these worms. You can ask yours. Okay, so, I mean, is it like a physical worm or is it a spiritual worm? No, no, it's an actual physical worm. Most people oh. get them from eating oranges or beef. Or so says Barbara yeah, Streisand. Like a tape worm or a ring worm or something like that, right? No, it's not a ring worm. It's it's like it's it's a thick. It's like a snake almost, but it's not a snake. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those really big thick worms. Uh huh. It's like that. But again, if you have the loving power of Jesus in you, you don't have to worry about the big thick worm thing, because it's okay, allergic to so Jesus. I don't think I should worry about the worms then. Well, do you have bumps on your neck? Uh, no, I don't have bumps on my neck. Do you sometimes get I dizzy? I smoke too much, so I probably want to get throat cancer one day, but apart from that, no bumps on my neck. Ah, yeah, the smoking keeps the worm away. Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's a good thing then, I guess. It is, it is. No benefit for smoking, wow. Yeah, who knew, right? I know. So what's happening with the computer now? Is it back on? Uh, yeah, I have to wait for the, the thing to log in. So what kind of computer is that? Is that a laptop, Dell, or HP? It's an HP, Dell, Apple, Xbox hybrid. Oh, hold on a second. Dell, HP, Xbox, Apple hybrid. Yeah. Who made that? I did. Okay, how did you make it? Out of what? Uh, well, I took a Dell, an HP, uh, a laptop, a Samsung Galaxy S, and an Xbox, and I took some super glue and duct tape, and I duct taped them together. 
Then through the holy power of Jesus and his magical demons, I created something that could interface with the monitor. You're now you're messing with me. No, not messing with you. <laughs> you have to be messing with me. You can't duct tape laptops together and make it work and with the power of Jesus. Yeah, it, normally you can't duct tape them together and have them work, but with the power of Jesus from the moon, it will work. Okay, I'm not sure I believe you. Okay. And it runs on so Windows I'm... 7. I, I can believe the lizard man, sir, but. Uh... Duct taping an HP and Dell, Samsung Galaxy, and Apple. It's tempted to think you're messing with me now. I'm not messing with you. Okay, I hope not, because I've been pretty honest this whole conversation. I hope you're not messing with me. No, 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 not messing, not messing. Okay, so is the computer on then? Well, yeah, it is. Hold on, I got to give it a blood sample. Uh huh. Okay. And um. Are you connected to the internet now? Uh, I'm, I'm connected. Okay, so it was uh, Windows H, I mean Windows R. Windows R. And then I Event Viewer. It. And then it's Windows Logs. Event and then Windows Application. V-V-E-N-T-V-W-R. Okay, yeah, Event Viewer. I'm in the application for the Event Viewer. Okay, now if you click on Windows Log, and then you click on Applications, you oh. see all the error reports I was talking about. All right, I see one... A lot of in information, information with the dates, and as you scroll down, you see warnings and errors. I see... Warnings in yellow and errors in red. I see two errors. I'm still looking for warnings. Yeah, as you scroll down, there'll be errors. Uh, there'll be warnings in yellow and errors in red. Errors are worse than warnings. I'm, I see like one or two errors. You'll have to scroll down. Okay, yeah, I am scrolling down. I'm, I'm scrolling down all the way to the, the 10th, like October of 2014, when I used my wizard power to put this thing together. And I'm only seeing like four or five errors. Okay, well, there should be more, sir. Um, maybe you can't see them right now, uh, but we got like 140 in the past four days. No, I'm not seeing them. Like, I'm not seeing these errors. You sure you got the right okay. computer? Uh, yes, sir. Windows 7, right? Well, yeah, but you also didn't know that it was an Xbox, MacBook, Pro, i7. Who would ever, who would ever imagine a computer like that? Well, I mean, if you're getting errors from it, I'm assuming you're interfacing with it, and if you're interfacing with it, you should know all that. Uh, sir, sure. all I can see is that there's a laptop, Microsoft Windows 7 running. Uh, if you've done any, um, how do you call it, modification, uh, we wouldn't be able to see that, sir. Okay, can you tell what programs are running on it? Um, if you connect to the support side, yes, sir, I'll be able to tell you what programs are running on it, but not till you connect to the support side. Uh, every time your computer generates errors, it just sends us the error reports. Uh, that's about it. So we can see which computer it came from, and we can see the error report. Uh, now, if you go to the Windows support site, that is www. Wait a minute. Windows. You're calling from Windows? Uh, no, sir. I'm calling from iTech Alert. iTech? Alert. iTech Alert. Why am I sending Alert. errors to iTech? Uh, well, basically, so Windows doesn't deal with those errors themselves. Uh, because all they do is make operating systems. Um, when there's errors to do with security, uh, it's a technical alert team that is supposed to call the customers and inform them uh, to get some security. Um, How does Windows have my number? So they don't be hacked or anything like that. How does Windows have my number? Uh, well, so I guess when you purchase Windows, uh, the license on it, you probably got your number. I've got... I'm in Colorado. Uh, well, sir, is this an old address of yours? No. I've never been to North Carolina. Uh, yeah, is, but you are right? No. Not even No. Who am I talking to then? You're talking to Matthew Schaefer. Matthew Schaefer. 
Schaefer. Okay, that's interesting. Why did it say on this phone? I have no idea why it was be, be saying that, and I have no idea why Microsoft would even know who this guy's name is. Okay, so, um, but the number is yours, three. That's not my number. Wait a minute. Hang on. You huh? dialed a number that's not mine and got me. You're one of the lizard people. I knew it. I don't trust anybody. My pastor slash sister slash mother told me not to trust anyone. You're a liar.